Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to put a distributor in a small block Chevrolet, find top dead center on number one, get it timed up so it'll start the first try. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do if you're gonna put a distributor in, you have to know that the engine is on number one cylinder, top dead center. Now, a lot of guys do, they put their finger over the intake, or the, they put their finger over the spark plug hole and spin it around until it blows air out. Well, um, that's not always that easy to do. If you're having to spin the engine over, um, you don't have any help with you. If you're spinning it over with the ignition, you don't have any help with you, all that stuff. Uh, it's, it's, it's easier and better, in my opinion, to do it this way. Um, I've got the valve cover off. You wanna take the valve cover off. This is the best way to do it, in my opinion. And what you wanna do is turn the engine over. Now, if the spark plugs are out, that's way better if you're gonna use a ratchet on the front because you don't wanna break the crank butt off on the crank. But anyway, what you wanna do is you spin the engine over until you see the number one intake rocker start to actuate and open the valve. And, you know, this is your intake rocker, this is your exhaust rocker, it's lined up with your exhaust valve, and this lined up with your intake. So I'm gonna turn the engine over until my number one intake starts going down. All right, exhaust just went up, intake's going down. And as soon as the intake comes back up, I wanna line up my balancer mark with zero on my timing tab. And there it comes. Now, I've got to put my eyeballs in to do this. All right. Now I'm at top dead center on number one. Okay, so the bottom of your distributor has a shaft in it, a little shaft that drives the oil pump. Now the oil pump is going to have to slide into the bottom of this. Well, you want to be able to put the rotor where you want the rotor. You don't want to have to worry about putting your number one spark plug back here on the back because that's where the rotor ended up. Although you could do that. If you drop this distributor in, your gear on the distributor is going to mesh with the cam gear. And when it does, it's going to turn clockwise just a little bit when it meshes together. And it also needs to be able to drop down on the oil pump shaft. Well, you need to have that oil pump shaft lined up so you can put the distributor cap where you want it. Now, I like to have number one up here pointing towards my number one spark plug or my number one you know rocker arms so i want the rotor button to be right there that way i can put my number one spark plug there and go around especially on the hei it's a lot lot more important this is an aftermarket distributor so it's not going to be this, exactly the same as far as with the cap but the process is exactly the same so what i want to do is i want to look down in this hole and i want to see where my oil pump shaft is because the shaft mark on the distributor is pretty much in line with the rotor. Not exactly, but it's pretty much in line. You can kind of hold it up and look on it. On an HEI, they're usually a lot closer. This one's way off. So if I want to be right here on my number one, then I want to look at my shaft on here and see that it's going to be turned pretty much this way towards my number eight cylinder. I'm sorry, my number seven cylinder. So it's going to be turned right here. So I want to look down in here, see where the oil pump shaft slot is, and I want to turn it to right here. Okay, you can look down in here and kind of see, maybe, I'm trying to get the light in here, you can see where the oil pump shaft. All right, see the slot in the shaft right there? I want to turn that until it's pointed right here at my number seven cylinder. Okay, so I'm going to reach in here with my screwdriver. Put it in the slot in the shaft. And I'm going to turn that until it's where I want it to be. And right about there is about right. Okay, so now I've got my distributor pointed where I want it, and or my rotor button pointed where I want it. I'm actually going to turn it back just a little bit farther than where I want it because as it meshes, it's going to turn clockwise. And hopefully that's when it's going to line up with the oil pump shaft. So I'm going to turn it a little bit counterclockwise from where I actually want it. I'm going to slide my distributor down in there. And as it meshes with the cam gear, it's going to turn a little bit. And all this is brand new, so it might not mesh real easy. There we go. All right. 
and it's all the way down. Now, my pointer ended up, my rotor button ended up pointing right here instead of right here. It turned a little bit more than I thought it would, but that's okay. I can put more, number one right here, or I can move this back out. I don't have to move the engine at all, and I can turn the oil pump shaft a little bit farther counterclockwise, drop it back in, and it'll line up over here. I'm gonna try that real quick. All right, I'm gonna pull this out. Like I said, this is all brand new, and this thing's got some brand new O-rings on it, so it's a little tougher to pull out than a stock distributor would be. There we go. Now I'm gonna turn that oil pump shaft a little bit farther backwards. Okay, now I'm gonna put the distributor back in and hopefully the rotor button is closer to where I wanted it. And make sure when you're putting your distributor in, you've got your gasket on the base of your distributor. So I'm gonna turn it back almost completely to the left. Put my gasket down here and I don't put RTV on my distributor gasket. All right, get the O-rings to go past and once I get the O-rings to go past, it should, should seat, there we go. And what you can do, if it gets too stuck, you can actually go in, all right, mine's all the way down, and now my rotor is pointing at my number one cylinder. Now, sometimes it doesn't want to go down, and the option you have there, um, I don't like to do it too much because it can throw things off a of hair. You can reach over and turn the engine just a little bit, and it'll, it'll move a little bit. Now, as long as, but then what you want to do is you want to turn the engine back around to zero and see where your, uh, see where your rotor button ends up on the number one top dead center and make sure it's where you want it because when you turn the crank a little bit you're going to change the timing in relationship to the distributor just a little bit okay now you've got the distributor in you're going to put your cap on it only goes on one way whether it's an hei or one like this a small cap distributor my rotor is right here all right so this post is going to be my number one spark plug so i'm going to run this over to my number one spark plug um, and then I'm going to go clockwise around and it's going to be one, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two. So each part plug, you know, it's one, three, five, seven, two, four, six, eight. So you're just going to wire those up like that. And that way you, you can have control over where your spark plug wires end up, at least the starting point. Um, the rest of them, you know, they're going to cross a little bit. Now, if you have an HEI distributor, you're going to have your power head over here where your coil goes in the middle, your power and your tack drive comes over here, your module hooks into the bottom right here now if you do that like i said it's important to have the cap you know where you want it when you want to put your number one uh, spark plug wire on this side and it also gives you enough room to advance and retard it okay so what you want to do is now you've got this dead on your rotor well you're at zero's initial zero degrees initial timing so what you want to do is before you start the car before you even try you want to take and turn that just a little bit maybe between the two posts and that's going to give you, you know, 8 to 12 degrees initial timing, maybe a little less, maybe a little more. Um, like I said, it just depends on how big around the cap is and, you know, your idea of halfway between. So anyway, you want to turn that a little bit. That gives you some initial timing advance. And turning the distributor and the cap counterclockwise advances the timing. Turning it clockwise retards the timing. And you want to start probably on a small block Chevrolet. You want to start around 10 to 12 degrees initial timing advance that's going to be you know locked in when you tighten down your clamp for the distributor okay now as far as distributor timing goes well i've got an old hei here and i didn't want to put this one in the motor because it's grimy and grummy and it doesn't have a module and anyway all right so you have initial timing which is where the distributor body is in relation to the rotor cap and then you have mechanical timing which is mechanical advance anyway as the RPM of the motor goes up, you've got little weights on here with springs. And as the RPM goes up, the little weights spread out and advance the timing a tiny bit. Um, then you have vacuum advance, which does the same thing, but it uses engine vacuum to advance the timing. The more vacuum you have, the farther the timing goes advanced. Now, your vacuum advance um, basically will add 12 to 15 degrees. There's different 
values that they add timing and some of them are adjustable if it's got a nut on here you can adjust it and basically it adjusts your your how much vacuum advance you get with full vacuum and if it let's say if it's a if it's a 15 degree advance a vacuum advance canister um if you've got half i think 14 inches is usually what they go by as far as full vacuum so if you've got seven inches of vacuum you're going to have seven and a half inches which is half of 15 of your total timing advance for your vacuum canister so you're going to get half that at half the vacuum if the full vacuum is 14 inches so full vacuum is maximum timing half va vacuum is half of maximum timing so you can kind of get an idea if you've got a performance cam you're not getting full timing um, if you've only got eight inches of vacuum on that cam you put this on here it's going to give you a little more as soon as you get a wide open throttle or give it a, a hard acceleration your vacuum is going to drop out this is going away and your rpm is going up and then your mechanical advance kicks in so typically if you're cruising down the street you've got your initial advance plus however rpm however many rpm your mechanical advance has given you usually you want that all in by 3000 rpm uh, and you can change springs to change how fast your mechanical advance comes in and then if you're cruising and you have a good vacuum signal you can actually have let's say 12 degrees initial timing and then you might get 22 to 24 degrees from your mechanical advance all right so now you're at 36 you know degrees well then you've got 15 here you could have over 50 degrees total timing under very light load in cruising and that's okay but like i said you want to play around with it wide open throttle under load on a small block chevrolet typically 34 to 36 is about what you're going to see now initial advance um, I would set it at 12 if you have a performance engine or something like that I would kind of start at 12 make sure it's not hard to start because what will happen is if you get initial timing set too far the engine will want to drag the starter or kick back and you don't want that to happen you want it to be easy to start and then your vacuum advance can kick in and give you more advance for acceleration and then once you get the RPM up your mechanical advance is in now if you have a stock engine set it to the factory specs um, probably six to eight degrees you know total time or initial advance and you check initial with the vacuum advance unplugged now you can also change your vacuum advance characteristics by moving it from the timed port on the carburetor to full manifold vacuum there are advantages of that that's way too complicated for me to explain but anyway you want to get it on top dead center on number one piston you want to line your oil pump shaft up get your rotor button lined up where you want it drop it in there like i said you can move the in, the crankshaft a little bit to get it to move a little bit and drop down if you're having a real hard time if it's a brand new distributor it's going to fight you a little bit because the tolerances are going to be a lot closer and you've probably got uh o-rings on there they're going to give you a little bit of trouble with uh seating for the first time and like i said if you've got the hei with the cap you've got the um actually i've got a cap okay so if you've got an hei your cap's only going to go on one way there's a notch here in the body and there's a tab in the cap so you're going to want this on the passenger side this on the driver side because usually your wire for coming in for your ignition is right here and that gives you plenty of room to turn it to adjust it if you try to get this thing and just get your number one where you want it without getting the rotor really where it needs to be you're going to have you might have the distributor all the way against the firewall with the vacuum advance and you can't retard it enough or you might have this over here hitting the firewall and you can't advance it enough so I try to set this to where it's parallel with the front bumper. That way you can have a few degrees this way and a few degrees that way. You should be able to get the timing where you want it. Anyway, I hope this helped. And Chevy 714, uh, you've been asking for this video for a while. Hopefully this will answer all your questions. And if not, uh, just leave a comment there and I'll answer any other questions. See you guys next time.